Francis Ngannou has the world record for the most powerful punch. His punch is the equivalent to 96 horsepower, which is equal to getting hit by a Ford Escort going as fast as it can. Um, and it's more powerful than a 12-pound sled sledgehammer swung full force from overhead. Holy sh**. If there was an image in front of the word knockout on Wikipedia, it would look exactly like Francis Ngannou. When the Cameroonian enters the octagon and looks in the eyes of his prey, the last thing it thinks about is a game plan and preparation made during the camp, because it unconsciously gets overwhelmed with ancient instincts, and at that moment, the only question that begs the answer is, how do I survive? Get comfortable as today we're about to remember every knockout in the professional career of the former UFC champion. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Not many people know, but the professional MMA career of the Cameroonian did not start off with spectacular performances, ending with knockouts during the very first seconds and vibrations through the whole arena caused by the collision of fists with the opponent's chins. The first MMA fight of Francis Ngannou took place on November the 30th of 2013. Back then, the most prominent knockout artist of the day and the scariest fighter on the whole planet beat his opponent via armbar. After that, he lost by decision to Zumana Sise. Sure, everybody acknowledges that at that time, a young and inexperienced prospect just came to this sport and recently asked for supervision from Fernando Lopez. But let's not talk about the sad stuff. Already in April of 2014, Nganu went for the second victory and by the will of fate, faced a fighter from Belgium, Bilal Tahahi. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the full footage of this fight. However, it's known that this walk in the park ended in the first minutes of the first round. At first, Francis was evidently restrained in terms of arsenal. That's why he couldn't use his power to the full extent. First, he awarded his opponent with a couple of low kicks and then with a striking ease, teleported him to another dimension by a simple one-two and a flying jab. In reality, it was only a demo version of the future Francis, because the next knockout win came only 13 months later. During this time, he added two more names to his resume, but beat them via submission chokes. On May the 28th of 2015, a young and hungry Nganu met with the Brazilian representative William Baldati. The fight began in a rather measured manner. One could say that Francis practiced his future bout with Derek Lewis in the super fight of the decade, already back then, in advance. Overall, the most part of the fight was dedicated to exploring different aspects of the clinch game. But to be fair, the Brazilian acknowledged the danger of his opponent's striking technique so he did everything in his power to drag the fight to the ground level. Nganu did not really resist it, but frankly speaking, he couldn't do it even if he wanted to, so he accepted the reality and pricked up his ears. Why? Because the aforementioned coach was giving his students some loud advice. The Cameroonian did not use it immediately, but in the end, he succeeded in that. He managed to get out of a tough spot, not when he moved to France though, it's the fight we're speaking about and took the dominant position. Baldati spread his face all over the canvas and took everything Francis offered him in the form of a finish. TKO. Overall, such a modest record of five wins and one loss in two years was more than enough to get an opportunity of signing the contract with the world's best league. Already in December of the same year, the main chin hunter went on to have a trip to the heavyweight division. His first opponent within New Walls was another Brazilian prospect, Luis Henrique. He helped the Cameroonian make his debut at UFC on Fox 17. UFC, this on other levels. I've been doing a little bit, I uh, started a few months ago and I've been fighting in our organization, but this is something huge, this is something, the next step. There is an opinion that the first impression matters the most, the way people perceive you for the first time. That's how they are going to see you in the future. Overall, Francis managed to make a needed impression and establish himself as a dangerous knockout artist. 
If not counting the problematic first round, the Cameroonians successfully broke into the best promotion by shutting Luis Henri lights out already in the middle of the second round. After that, hungry Francis turned his sights on the eternal contender in the face of Curtis Blades. That fight saw the light of day at the 86th Fight Night Tournament on April the 10th of 2016. The first clash between these two lasted longer than all the subsequent ones from Nganu up until the first title bout. Throughout 10 minutes, Curtis Blades tried to slow the Cameroonian down and actively utilized his wrestling skills, but even a blind shooter is still a shooter nonetheless. Eventually, a couple of flying bombs made his right eye shut down, just like Marvin Vittori's chances to win the championship. The fight had to be stopped and the young predator was awarded with a TKO victory. What I did tonight made me dream bigger and um, I feel things very easier than last time and uh, I think I will go better and better with the time. Already three months later, Francis honoured the cage with his appearance to share it with the Serbian representative Bojan Mihailovic. That fight took place on UFC on Fox 20 in the heart of Chicago. Frankly speaking, the Serbian did not pick the best tactic for this fight because from an athletic standpoint, it wouldn't be enough of him for a simple lap run compared to the Cameroonian. But of course, there is nothing to blame him for. At that moment, he was driven by the self-preservation instinct. But even with that, Boyan was able to survive for only one and a half minutes until it was all over by a brutal TKO. I know just here for, for the super, super fight. I need to... I have some, some goal and my goal is not only one fight. My goal is um, the, the belt, the, the throne. And everyone, they give me to fight. I get to fight it because maybe I'm supposed to fight all of them. Uh, I am here for, for a long time. I'm not here just for two days or one week. The popularity of Francis grew like crazy. Such a built and incredibly strong fighter drew attention almost instantly. And the most amazing thing is that he didn't need to use trash talk to make people talk about him. A dangerous and cold aura that got bigger with every fight was enough. After Anthony Hamilton lost via Kimura in the first round, the organization decided to put the contender against a former champion in the face of Andre Alovsky. This fight took place in January of 2017 at UFC on Fox 23. I start, I start MMA. That is when I start to watch the talking about this fighter, this fighter. And then I go to YouTube, I watch the video. I look some people fight. They say, well, Ken Velasquez, they say Dos Santos, Alovsky. And that is when I start to uh, know them. I start looking at them. But at the time, I'm still uh, dream for the boxing car, to have a boxing career. And I, I don't think so, so say one day I, I can have the opportunity to fight them. And then after that, when uh, USA give me opportunity, I say, why not? Now I go to, to, to do my best and to be the best, you're supposed to be the best. On that very night, Denver's crowd enjoyed a vivid performance of the night that lasted only one and a half minutes. The Cameroonian entered the octagon like a boss and stopped Andrei Alovsky by only reacting to the counter-attack. Another TKO. Uh, since when I started this spot just um, three years, three years and a half ago, and then all the way when I continue, I, I grow. There are a lot of people behind of me who believe me and who push me, who, who make me trust of me because for the beginning, it's not something who interests in me. And then today, because of that, that uh, people who push me up, I believe and I trust uh, for this sport. Uh, since when I have my sign on USA, and then and then people continue to support me to to stay behind of me, and he pushed me up. The next fight happened to be a token one in the career of the horrendous predator. Initially, after beating Alovsky, Francis was supposed to face Junior dos Santos but the latter pulled out due to an injury and the world's best league shuffled everything up at the very last moment. The fight between the Cameroonian and a lover of a specific kind of meat, Alistair Overeem, was targeted for December's event. The guy shared the octagon in the co-main event of UFC 218. Any last one for Alistair? I don't think. I just 
I'm just gonna ask you one question. How tough is the his chin is strong now? It was a significant bout for Nganu, not only because of the manner he got done with over him. In this case, the more important thing was what happened prior to the targeted event. Because before the fight, Francis decided to try on a mystic mackerel, but in heavyweight, and accurately predicted the outcome of the upcoming fight in an extremely brief manner. What happened on December 2nd of 2017 in Detroit is stuck in the viewers' minds for the rest of their lives because what the Predator did to Alistair Overeem is nothing less of attempted murder. He delivered one of the most terrifying knockouts in the history of the sport. After that fight, the Hollander unlocked a new achievement. Now he can cosplay a headless Nick from Harry Potter anytime he wants. I don't even know what happened, you know. I just threw a punch and then that's happened. <laughs> and I, I was already engaged, but I didn't had uh, I didn't have time to see that he's like uh, out. Then, as you know, Francis Ngannou's career entered the stage of reconsideration as he had to experience a real catharsis of facing reality. And the reality was that nobody can call themselves invincible. There's always a bigger fish, and one should not get their heads up in the sky even if it seems like they are capable of that, because otherwise the fall will be very hurtful. As he lost to Stipe Miocic in the title fight, and then to Derek Lewis in the fight that is hard to compete with such a legendary clash as Adesanya Romero, the Cameroonian rolled back to the contender's backyard. In November of 2018, the Predator made his first steps towards redemption. In the main event of Fight Night 141, he gave a rematch to Curtis Blades. To China to take a little bit of respect and to bring a little bit of happiness to my fan. In the end, Francis's return to the winning path was more than successful. Nganu needed only 45 seconds to stop the opponent via TKO with a heavy hammer and subsequent follow-up. Three months later, the Predator came back to the octagon for a new portion of dominance. In the main event of the first UFC on ESPN tournament, he came out to fight another former champion in the face of the legendary Cain Velasquez. I can knock everyone out. No question about it. No that. question about it, no doubt about it. Again, the best heavyweight of the past generation and the guy who on paper seemed like a kryptonite for the Cameroonian, Francis Ngannou needed only 26 seconds less than a half of a minute did the chin hunter needed to shock the world once again and deliver an unprecedented performance. I, want, I promise you guys, I'm back. As I said before, I'm back. And you're going to see me around again. I told you yesterday I have some surprise for you. I hope you, you like it. Another win over a former UFC champion impressed many fans but it still wasn't enough to shut down the talks that spread since a historic battle with Derek Lewis. That's why the Predator aimed for the head of another veteran of the heavyweight division. On June 29th of 2019, he shared the octagon with Junior Dos Santos. At that moment, the Brazilian was on a streak of three victories. That fight was held at another UFC on ESPN event. The reality is I'm going there with some bomb that I'm going to throw and uh, he can't catch it. He know that he, don't, he doesn't have uh, a toy to catch my, uh, <laughs> my bomb. Maybe. And in fact, he was right once again. The Cameroonian spent only 72 seconds shaking up the earth and sent the Brazilian to the emergency room to check his head for a concussion. A brutal performance. I'm very happy now. And then uh, I hope the UFC is going to uh, realize that I deserve the title shot right now. Certainly. I deserve the winner of uh, DC and, uh, and Stipe. Of course, it gave, it gave me some confidence, but before that, I was already confident because Junior is a striker, he's a boxer, and I, uh, I believe that I'm the best boxer in this division. However, the organization was not in a hurry to pamper Francis. That's how much the guy offended the bosses of the UFC with his loss at the 220th tournament. That's why they decided to check his power for the last time before the second title opportunity. The historic event of UFC 249 took place on May the 9th of 2020. The Cameroonian faced the Surinamese Jazinho Rosenstrike. 
At that moment, the latter broke into the organization with a perfect professional record of 10 wins and no losses, nine of which were knockout stoppages. On Saturday night, you're going to see my strategy. The Predator began to show all seriousness of his intentions right from the very beginning. His strategy was very simple, but still effective. He simply went forward, unloading his deadly clip, and one of the devastating missiles ripped the Suramaniza's head off. 20 seconds into the fight, and Rosenstrike is already treated by a group of medical personnel. I'm about that, you know, I'm happy after 15 weeks of training camp and uh, had a, I would say, easy, easy camp, easy fight. Uh, it's just great, you know. So I put all the all the pain, all the suffer in the training camp, and the, the fight went well. After that fight, the high wheels accepted the Cameroonians' call and persuaded the matchmakers. When Stipe Miocic finally settled things down with Daniel Cormier, he gave the Predator a second chance to conquer the gold. On March the 27th of 2021, the world saw a long-anticipated rematch in the main event of UFC 260. I remember that fight from um, from the preparation, and um, obviously I'm not taking credit of Stipe. He was a better fighter that night, um, but when I look at that fight, I hate watch that fight because I don't recognize myself. Even the way that I'm fighting, the way that I'm rushing, it doesn't. That guy looked like me, but I don't recognize that sad style. Um, and also, I have a lot of, I did a lot of mistake uh, leading up to that fight. I wasn't even there myself, you know, I kind of like, um, I didn't even have an emotion of in that fight. I don't know, I was just there, like, lack of emotion. But uh, this time, things will be different. I, I, have, I had enough time. If people didn't know that these two already had an opportunity to fight a few years earlier, they wouldn't believe that Stipe Miocic managed to stop this crazy killing machine. Because in the rematch, Francis Ngannou showed an absolutely different level of power and dominance. He did not simply knock a former champion out, he literally turned him inside out. Thus, the last knockout in the Cameroonian's career happened when he conquered the main gold of the world's best league. I feel great, man. You know, it's been three years that I've been living uh, with uh, without it, I thought uh, I always thought that I could have had it three years ago. So um, tonight there wasn't a, a place for mistake. So, do you think it was a right decision for Francis to leave the UFC? Maybe it wasn't worth it to make life easier for the heavyweight division. Or is it a good thing that the fighters can finally breathe freely? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos. And of course. Hit the like button if you don't want to meet the predator in a dark alley. And that's it for today. See you soon.